Hi there. Um, I thought I'd spend the few minutes that I have here today just talking about some of the transitions from uh, secondary education into uh, third level, uh, the challenges that they face or uh, they pose, and some of the ways that I've tried to address these with our first year pharmacy students. Um, and I suppose when I was thinking about transitions, uh, I was put in mind of Mars Escher's um, drawing or woodcut, uh, Sky and Water. Um, I think it's actually not a bad um, representation of what happens in college. We sort of start out at the bottom with um, our first year uh, students, maybe from secondary school, maybe from um, a mature student background, and they progress gradually up. Um, they have goals, ambitions. In three, four, five years' time, they see themselves up there at the top flying, um, and it's our job to help them get there. Um, but unfortunately, um, I don't know if you ever felt that some of your classes were a bit like this, um, sometimes with the first years in particular, I think they struggle to identify, particularly with the early generic material. Sometimes there's, you know, foundation level service taught material that needs to lay the basis for what will come in the more you know, subject specific components. Um, and they can't really identify with it and that leads to disenchantment, which at its worst, of course, can give problems with retention. Um, a second thing is that while they obviously want their classes to be focused very much on their future career, um, I think sometimes for assessment point perspective, you know, they focus very much on the here and now, you know, is it on the exam? Um, and of course, once that exam is over, like the goldfish memory, uh, that knowledge uh, seems to somehow delete. Um, and even if we can get them past that and, you know, thinking of the bigger picture and um, engaging uh, and we sort of feel that we're moving up from the fish to maybe the birds, so what strategies have we taken to, to go with this and um, to try to overcome these problems? Well, there are four really that I've taken and the first two I just want to touch on because there's many more people involved in them besides myself. Um, and the first two are, are um, integration and application. Integration, we've really tried very much to, to dovetail uh, our modules, to find synergies and to harmonise what we do in the foundation level material with the more applied stuff. Um, and one um, thing that I came up with, which I think has helped, is to create these um, characters, avatars effectively, um, who we have them pop up in individual modules, patients, virtual patients that sort of link from um, one theme to the next. And they can see that even in the um, foundation level material, if this character arises, they can see how that knowledge might be applied in the future. Uh, in terms of application, we've built in uh, more work experience into our programme. Um, and we've bridged that with more problem-based learning and case-based learning uh, in the actual courses. But moving it out into the workplace, which we have done, we've brought, as I say, more work experience in, it has a challenge because of um, the patients that are in the workplace. You know, their safety is paramount. So we can't, um, you know, let students do anything too critical. And in, in university, you know, we have limited resources. But out in the workplace, they have to be monitored so closely that they actually don't get the chance to, to fail, to actually try new things and, and, and fail safely. So that brings me to the third thing, which is simulation. Um, and I've tried a number of simulations. I suppose the first one was you know, fairly straightforward. But it was just a 3D model of a dispensed product. Um, and I sat it inside a, a PDF. Um, and basically, students are able to just click and drag and rotate this as though they were turning it over in their hands. And it's a really simple thing, but a very nice simulation of exactly what they would do in practice. The key thing is there's no prompts. There's nothing to say, look here, look there, you know, check it. So they have to themselves develop a strategy, you know, to remember how they're going to take this approach uh, and uh, simulate it. And they can practice, 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 fail safely um, and master that skill. And then, of course, when they do move into the, the work experience components, we can set them, you know, more challenging tasks, give them a bit more responsibility and they can spread their wings a bit. Um, and that, of course, made me ambitious too. Um, so I'm trying to move on with the virtual patients and get something that um, will allow me to have students dialogue uh, with these patients, again, in an unprompted way. There are some virtual patients out there, but they're very menu driven. And so students are sort of prompted, you know, ask this question or you've got a range of questions to pick from. I want it to be, I've sort of taken techniques from online uh, gaming where it's very responsive, just in a dynamic way to whatever the student might say or not say. Um, so with all these strategies, um, you know, how far have we got our first students along this diagram? Well, I would say they're probably somewhere around the middle. Um, and in fact, 
I like to think of the, the penguin as not a bad example of where the students are at. Um, they are birds, um, but they're probably still more comfortable down in the water among the fish. Um, and that, I suppose, just brings me to my fourth point. We, we need to have expectations for high, high expectations for our students. Have you ever thought, heard of the Pygmalion uh, effect? Pygmalion effect really basically says that you know, if you uh, pose students with a challenge and let, expect them to succeed, they will actually, that will actually be self-fulfilling. I like to think that it shows that simulations uh, can help um, us get from the middle, uh, where our penguins are at the minute, right up to the top flying away there. And I hope that uh, bodes well for our student penguins too. Uh, thank you very much.